Cross has many vital shoulders on which the sport stands, people who helped shape the sport the way we now know it. Names as varied as Sven Nijs and Eche Nijewad have had incredible impacts on the sport, though the impacts of these people have largely been on the men's side of the sport before slowly seeping over to the women's. But the only reason they were able to seep over, the reason that we have this equality in the first place, is all down to one of the greatest female crossers of all time. I'm of course talking about Daphne van den Brand. Stephanie van den Brand, born in April 1978, hails from the town of Zeeland, not to be confused with the province of Zeeland, both in the Netherlands. Growing up on the bicycle, taking part in regular competition as a child, and even winning fairly often, she'd discover herself to be a pretty decent sprinter. By 1993, she'd managed to get herself into the National Junior Program, and while still performing decently on the road, her skill set would start to lean more towards cross. In that same 93, she'd even managed to land herself a third place at the Elite National Championships, aged just 15. An achievement that would get her an invite to come and try out mountain bike at a higher level too. In 1994, she'd achieved top 10s at both the Worlds and Euros for Juniors on the mountain bike. Throughout the late 90s, von den Brandt would start to grow her stature. In 94 and 95, she'd finished second at the Nationals in Cross, slowly discovering that she preferred racing off the road to that on it. However, her mountain bike hopes would start to be dashed slightly by an incredibly strong hay fever. And so, Cross would become her discipline of choice. Unfortunately, her discipline of choice did not have a world title available at the time, and was generally an underfunded mess, something that Daphne van den Brandt was going to change quite considerably. In 1997, van den Brandt would take her first major victory by winning the women's race in Gieten, also taking victory in Reusel. As the era of Natasha den Ouden and Reza Homer's Ravenstein was coming to a close, the era of Daphne van den Brandt would just start to take shape. Twelve months later, she would consolidate herself as the very best rider in orange by defending her wins in Reusel and Gieten, but also winning in Moegestel and taking a very first Dutch national title. Whilst the men who'd raced that same day would dive deep into preparations for the World Championships, the peak of the season coming up with the pressure and the festival atmosphere being ramped up to 11, Van den Brandt and the other women would have their season slowly peter out with nothing really to race anymore and Van den Brandt was determined to make a change to that. So in 1998, she, together with a fellow colleague, penned a letter and sent it off to Switzerland to the head office of the UCI. The UCI had in years earlier promised a test event for women, but never really made it come to fruition. They'd also made comments stating that they felt women's racing was not aesthetic enough, which considering that women did race mountain bike, didn't really add up. And so Daphne wrote her letter. Her letter asked what would need to be done in order to get a world championship for women, and the reply she received stated that the UCI did not think that the level of women's cross was high enough to sanction an official world championships. How they were supposed to get that level high enough without a world championships was anyone's guess, but the UCI did give in somewhat, stating that if they were able to prove that 16 nations would take to the start of the world championships, they would organise one. And so, after a long lobbying campaign, in the year 2000, 53 riders from 16 nations took to the start line, lone Moldovan rider Liliana Robu dragging the women over the line. In St. Michelsgestel, some 30 kilometers from her home in Zeeland, Daphne van den Brandt would line up as one of the major favorites to take the first ever world title. Alongside Germany's Hanka Kufenagel, they were the two big ones. In the end, van den Brandt would get beaten out by the more experienced German, Kufenagel becoming the first female cyclocross world champion. 
Van Brand herself would ultimately be involved in a close battle for second with Britain's Louise Robinson. On the final lap, an untimely bike change for Van den Brandt would set her back some 10 seconds, costing her that second place. Her world title debut would end up with third place, the first time a Dutch woman had received a cyclocross medal ever. And with that bronze medal in her pocket, Daphne would set about establishing herself as arguably the greatest female crosser in the world. The following season she would take six individual victories, including crosses like Os Moller, Gieten and Zedam. By January 2001 she'd make a fourth consecutive Dutch national title, equaling the women's record for most titles, alongside Natasha den Ouden. Two weeks later, the battle for another world title would happen, and in the Czech Tabor, Van den Brandt would once again finish third, and 12 months later, she could have made the position her home. In Zolder 2002, she would be third again. The 01-02 season would see Van den Brandt expand her palmares slightly more though. She'd win in Hoge Heide, taking another national title to take the women's record outright as well. But whilst she may have been dominant on the national scene, she was still missing that world title battle. She didn't have the rainbow jersey, as it had been consistently on the shoulders of her big rival, Hanka Kufenagel. Whilst Daphne had taken three bronzes, Hanka's two worlds and another silver made her slightly bigger. So when the UCI announced that the women would get their own five round World Cup, Daphne van den Brandt knew that it was time for herself to step up and really make her mark as an all round crosser. Daphne's season would start in November, at the very first Women's World Cup in Frankfurt. There's no surviving footage of this race online, so it's remarkably tough to picture together what happened. What we do know is that the world champion at the time, Laurence Le Boucher, was third, whilst Kupfernagel and Van den Brandt fought out for the win. The victory eventually going to Van den Brandt, proving she could beat Kupfernagel on the biggest stages, and over the next months, she would go on to prove that point emphatically by winning in Kanthout, Livan, Wetzikon and Hoge Heide, achieving a perfect World Cup sweep, a feat nobody else had achieved across men's or women's cross at that time. In her golden year, Daphne would also claim a sixth national title and seven more victories including races at historic places such as Lunhout and Oostmalle. The big goal, however, would be the World Championships in Monopoli in Italy. After her dominant performance all season, Van den Brandt was the clear favourite. On the day though, the battle would be immense between Van den Brandt, Kupfernagel, Le Boucher and home favourite Annabella Stropparo. The main event would be Kupfernagel and Van den Brandt, the two would be inseparable throughout the race. Their battle would come all the way down to a final sprint, where Van den Brandt would unleash her great weapon, that great sprint that she started her career on all those years ago, flying ahead of Kufenagel to claim a very first cyclocross world title, becoming the fourth Dutch person and crucially the first woman to be cyclocross world champion, capping off an incredible season in which she won pretty much every major race and competition that was available to her. With the rainbow jersey on her shoulders, Van den Brandt would place herself alongside Koep van Nagel as inarguably the two big dogs of women's cross. The two would start to dominate, but throughout the following seasons they'd be start to join by a third. This young Dutch woman called Marianne Vos would start to appear as well. Throughout the 03-04 season, Koep van Nagel, Vos and Van den Brandt would share almost all major victories between them including all six World Cups. Unfortunately, Van den Brandt would not have the best season in Rainbow. She'd take a World Cup victory and a handful of other big wins, but faced issues and illness throughout January. These issues would see her miss her first Dutch national title since 1998, fail to finish at the inaugural European Championships, and her world title defence would be an underwhelming one as she struggled to a career-worst 11th place. Whilst the rainbow season might not have gone entirely to plan, 
the next years she would be right back to her best, winning consistently, including reclaiming the national title, taking victories such as Bretagne and Kopenberg, and in the 05-06 season, she would successfully win all seven World Cups for the second time in her career, achieving a perfect World Cup sweep, something nobody else has ever managed even once. Showcasing the incredible fine margins in competition the next season, Daphne would fail to win a single World Cup cross. She would, however, take her very first European title, an honour she would successfully defend the following season, as she again took three World Cups and three rounds of the inaugural trophée for women, also becoming the first woman to win the competition overall, beating Reza Homes Ravestein and an 18-year-old Sonne Kant to the title. And with riders like Koufenagel and Le Boucher on the way out, and the youth of Sonne Kant and Marianne Vos leading a new generation into cross, a change of guard was starting to come, but Van den Brandt wasn't planning on letting that change of guard happen to her. There may have been a new generation coming through, but it was Van den Brandt who'd again be arguably the woman of the season, winning numerous World Cups and successfully defending her overall title in the Extreo Trophée as well. Consistency would become her main advantage. She'd perform very well in the overall competitions, but at the Worlds and Euros, the one-day events, she would become slightly unstuck, as youngsters like Vos, Gant, Sanne van Passen and Caroline Manie started to suddenly appear and perform as well. Heading into the new decade in 2010, she would keep winning, taking another overall title in both the World Cup and the Trophée. A third European title came as well, and so would two more World Championship podiums. In 2010, Van den Brandt would win her 11th Dutch national title, an outright record across both men's and women's cross. By the end of 2012, Van den Brandt would win a fourth World Cup, a fourth x Trophée, and a fourth European title. But near the end of the season, she would surprise everyone, announcing her retirement from the sport after the final round of the Trophée in Oostmalle. She'd retire right at the very top of her game. That final round in Oostmalle would be a festival of all things Van den Brandt, celebrating the legacy of the woman who brought women's cross into the picture, who laid the foundations for the still blossoming spot that it then was. Daphne would win her final race as a professional, beating Marianne Vos in a two-up sprint, Van Passer would round out the podium. The victory confirmed that Van den Brandt would win her fourth x Trophée overall, and during the race, under the impulse of Vos, the rest of the competitors would don Van den Brandt's infamous braids as a show of respect. And so, in a sandy forest, somewhere in Belgium, a close came to the career of arguably the woman who started it all. In retirement, Daphne would focus on setting up a family. By December of 2012, the year that she retired, she would give birth to her daughter, Isa. That family life has been the main focus of Van den Brandt ever since. Along with her partner, Johan, she runs a bicycle shop named Cycle Experience in Uden, the slightly larger town next to the village that she hails from. The shop is, well, a shop, and seemingly a very good one at that. So if you're ever stuck in that very specific part of the Netherlands, now you know, you shall be saved. Throughout her 15-year career, Van den Brandt wrapped up 125 victories, from the time in which she raced a very, very impressive amount. She also won the very first World Cup, and from that moment on, held the record for most World Cup victories with 22 World Cups, until she was equalled and passed by Katie Compton during the 2013-14 season. Marianne Vos has since passed both, with a record of 28, but Van den Brandt is still the joint record holder for overall victories, sharing three overall victories with Sonne Kant. The Super Prestige did not organise an overall competition during the time of Van den Brandt, but she would win 10 individual rounds. Only Lucinda Brandt's 11 and Sanne Kant's 27 sit higher. Whilst the trophée would start midway through Van den Brandt's career, she would still perform incredibly well in the competition. During her career, she'd compete in five seasons of the trophée, 
and she'd win the overall four times, sat in the record books only behind Sonicont's six overall victories. In that time period, she would rack up ten individual wins too, joint with Mariana Vos, one behind Selin Alvarado's 11, and some way of Kant's dominant 26. Considering how Van den Brandt missed out on these competitions during the early parts of her career, it is incredibly impressive that she is still putting herself up alongside the likes of Kant, Brandt and Alvarado, people who race nowadays and get more races per season and have had more seasons. Van den Brandt grew up racing as a sprinter on the road and that would always remain her biggest weapon, being able to deliver powerful punchy accelerations mid-race and having that killer sprint at the end that of all her rivals only Mariana Vos could even remotely live with. Overall, courses of a more technical nature suited Van den Brandt the best. Her shorter stature gave her a harder time competing with the larger and stronger Kufenagel in the muddiest of races. Courses such as Coxider would be favourites of Van den Brandt throughout her career, as she was able to use her technical prowess in these occasions. Frankly, I don't think there is an appropriate way to praise Van den Brandt enough. The impact she's had on women's cross, and kind of on women's cycling as a whole, as an effect, is frankly huge. Her pushing for the inaugural Worlds back in 2000 set the stage for the eventual World Cup, the Expo Trophy, the Super Prestige, and the setters on the road that currently has us pretty close to equality and proper good treatment. There are still wins to be made, make no mistake, but every cross nowadays has two crosses. That's the standard, a standard that Von den Brandt fought to create, and it's incredible to think that all I just said, whilst on one hand exemplifying her vital importance to the sport, on the other hand diminishes slightly how frankly insane she actually was as a racer too. A list of cross legends is not complete if it does not have Daphne Van den Brandt right near the very very top. <laughs>